One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Since the start of the Apollo missions, every spacesuit, including the ones worn by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin on the moon, has been made here at ILC Dover's facility in Frederica, Delaware. By 1965, we won the contract as a prime contract for the Apollo spacesuit. We, uh, in the 1970s, win the space shuttle contract, and we go on to build all those suits, and now we're building uh, uh, for the space station an identical type suit. Each spacesuit is handmade over the course of a couple of months with extensive testing for durability and flexibility. But just climbing into the suit can be a challenge. Would-be astronauts first have to put on a suit filled with tubes of liquid cooling water. When you're in the suit for up to six, seven, maybe eight hours working, you're working very hard, you generate a lot of heat, a lot of humidity in the suit. Well, this helps relieve all that by this, uh, these cooling tubes that are up against close to the skin. And getting the entire suit on requires a bit of help. Uh, there's many layers of this, so it makes it a little difficult to get in. There you go. Once it's on, ILC Dover runs the suit through exercises to test its range of motion. As far as mobility, you have almost 180 degrees of rotational mobility. And if the suit seems cumbersome now, keep in mind that it's dealing with Earth's gravity. 300 pound spacesuits are designed to work best in a weightless environment. And of course, if you're in zero-G, it's a lot easier. You don't have to fight the G-force like I am, where you have the whole suit laying on your shoulders and on your legs. ILC Dover says they've never had a suit fail on a mission. And the testing done at their lab is part of the reason why. After all, there's no margin of error for clothing in space. Jason Sanchez, Frederica, Delaware. Oh, that is too cool. We got to try